Dr. Daniel Floriani, thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. No worries. It's good uh, to see you. Yeah, absolutely. We last caught up in November uh, on a cyber risk meetup that we looked at cyber security and space. Yes. Uh, there was some clear call to actions even out of that particular uh, session where there's a lack of international standards and you know some international concern around cyber security and uh, and space. Yes. You're part of uh, that lead international paper. Just your general observations on cyber security and space technology. I've just spoken to the Ukrainian ambassador as well, okay, actually. Yeah, so big, big moment there. Yeah, so. with the Viet uh, interception. So you know, we do have examples of uh, cyber security breaches within the space domain. Mm -hmm. Just your general observations uh, in this, and should we be concerned? Well, definitely, we should be concerned. I, I've been involved in space cyber for I don't know four or five years now when a lot of the space companies here were small startups, and it's fair to say they were pretty, space, cyber wasn't their number one focus in yep. building a space capability. But it's been really pleasing to watch through the reviews that I do and the work that I do that slowly they're starting to change their view and actually take cyber more seriously. So it's a good change, right? yep. but there's still a lot more to do. Where do you think, uh, there was mention of a uh, space OSAC uh, where, where do you see the international collaboration on, ah. on cyber and who are the key organisations that the audience should be aware so of? So we're one of the two Australian companies, I think we're the first or second Australian companies to join the Space ISAC out of the Colorado. Yep. Um, and uh, it's great to have the ability to converse with people in a, in a global manner. Um, I'm part of a small group looking at zero trust architectures for space cyber, for example. 4.30 in the morning call, so it's a bit of work, I bet. Yep. collaboration. Um, but it's really it's really handy um, and, and, and good to find a community. And it's a small but vibrant community in this uh, global uh, space cyber world. That's really good to be part of. Um, and I think you mentioned a little bit about Ukraine earlier, that uh, the Ukraine event, uh, especially day one, was a big cyber event, but there's been more after that, space cyber. Uh, so that's kind of really focused the attention on people. Um, but, you know, the generic cyber world, non-space related, is also a very good reminder for people that you know, things are getting serious and so we need to take it more, you know, make a good look at it. The other thing, we were in at the Space Symposium in Colorado Springs uh, a few weeks ago. I was speaking to HPE uh, and their, their computing uh, platforms. Okay. They're basically x86s uh, <laughs> and, and being put up on the International Space Station. Uh, so yeah. this is you know, Earth technology uh, being put up in a space. So really from a cyber perspective, the same cyber security principles apply, zero trust approach can still be applied Abs within space. Absolutely. One of the number one questions people ask me, what is space cyber? What's so special yeah, about well, it? Is it? Is it different? At the end of the day, cyber, 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 right? <laughs> yeah. But what is different is um, if you are working on a satellite and you accidentally rotate it, you now have lost comms for good. Yep. So you have to understand the beast you're working on if you accidentally shut down a rocket mid-flight, it could hit someone, so you yeah. have to understand. So what we really need in space cyber is people that understand the orbits of space, the mechanics of space, the realities of space. You can't go and visit something and fix it if you make a mistake. So we need lots of simulators, lots of trainers to kind of co-train people in space cyber. But they need to be cyber aware and space aware. So it's really that operation, that OT cyber security. It's is definitely really OT. Yeah. Uh, having said that, uh, this whole supply chain, making sure people build things correctly, that's a kind of an IT thing as well. Yeah. You know? And space supply chain is long and deep, and especially in Australia, there's not a lot here, so a lot of it's imported. So it's very hard to, to manage that, but it's important to manage it. And another key one is both industries are talking about workforce development, uh, wanting people. I think there's an opportunity here, obviously, for Australia. Do you think uh, you're an Adelaide-based company, yeah. but you've focused really in on your cyber ops, but you're focusing on the space sector? Yeah. How big is that opportunity? Do you think for space and yeah. and, uh, it's and cyber people? Yeah. So some some people refer to it as the magic pudding workforce. So everyone wants twenty thousand or ten thousand workers, but we only produce five or eight, ten if yeah. we're lucky. So please, more more uh, STEM students. That's what we want. A lot more STEM students. But um, look. We have to deal with what we've got, and um, space cyber is like double sexy, so hopefully that draws more people into cyber, uh, which then can be used when space is not, you know, because yeah. you don't do space every day potentially, they can go and do other critical infrastructure. So if we think of space as a critical infrastructure, um, and the skills that we learn in a space cyber training thing that we're hopefully going to build very soon, we will be building quite soon, um, those skills can be ported anywhere. A, a satellite, for example, is just a solar cell, a bit of computing, bit of mobility, you know, um, it's no different to a drone, it's no different to an autonomous uh, 
farming vehicle or something like that. So there's a lot of cross-pollination. Correct. Uh, Cyber Ops, uh, what's a good call to action that you'd like to t people to take away or even observations today? Well, there's not a lot of cyber security companies no, here, aren't. if that's and one so, observation I'll yeah, make. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why we chose to do this. <laughs> but also it's our passion because we're passionate about RF and passionate about space. Yeah. But the call to arms is quite clear for me. Uh, we're having our first ever space cyber conference in October in uh, dedicated space cyber. Other conferences have little aspects of it, but it's around trying to grow that community. Uh, it's growing in America, it's growing in Europe, so we really want to create a focus here. Uh, and I don't, I don't want it to be a conference that's just about talking. We want to give real practical advice on what you need to do if you want to um, improve the cyber security posture of your space company Wonderful. or product. Well, Dr. Daniel Floriani, uh, it's a pleasure to see you once again in Adelaide. No worries. Uh, hopefully we'll cross paths again, but thanks for joining us I'll on Australia sure in Space will. TV. Right. See you, thanks. I, I should say, it could also be Australia Cyber Security Magazine as yeah. well, so <laughs> well, you'll be in both of this particular edition. Thanks for joining us. No worries, thank you.